Guardian reports today on a new study that finds 6.5% of global GDP going to subsidizing fossil fuels around the globe. Of course, given the significance of such a report, you'd probably want to take a look at it yourself. Well, too bad, because you, when you go to the paper, you're asked to pay $19.95 to Science Direct just to view it. Yeah, right. This business of paying for papers is a massive problem, and it immediately denies the public from seeing the real results of important research like this. However, you might have some luck putting the DOI in the following website for free journal access. All links are in the video description for that, and for an older free IMF document on the topic. The big headlines are that fossil fuel subsidies have actually been rising despite world government promises to cut carbon emissions. They rose from $4.9 trillion in 2013 to $5.3 trillion in 2015, according to the article. These subsidies discourage investments in energy efficiency and renewable energy, which is plain stupid in today's world. But hold on for a second. What is the definition of a subsidy used in this study? Fair or not, their definition includes environmental costs like global warming and deaths from air pollution and taxes applied to consumer goods in general. As stated by one of the authors, this broader definition of subsidies accounts for the many negative side effects associated with the consumption of these fuels. Without these factors, the quote, narrow view of subsidies is just 0.7% of GDP, which leaves me a bit confused as to what exactly is being said here. But anyway, here is the breakdown of the claimed 4.9 trillion subsidy for 2013. Let's move on. And back to the atmosphere, where there have been some unusual goings-on. Wildfires in Europe, Siberia, and North America have been particularly in the news, but check this one out in the far north. Greenland, a land usually associated with ice, has a quite sizable fire going on. First detected on the 31st of July, and seemingly fueled by dry peat. However, while this fire appears dramatic, Ruth Motram, a climate scientist and glaciologist, tweeted that scientists who have worked in Greenland for decades said that while rare, wildfires are not too unusual in the region. Nonetheless, Steph Lermite has produced a very interesting graph showing MODIS satellite wildfire detections in Greenland since 2002. It looks like this year has unusually high fire activity in Greenland, but of course this record goes back only 15 years. Interestingly, July began colder than usual across Greenland, However, towards the end of the month, things changed and it became anomalously warm after the 24th of July, and continued like that towards the end of the month when the fire started. Of course, this is just one small story in a summer of fire in the Northern Hemisphere. Just look at the amount of smoke over British Columbia in Canada. Currently, 3,700 personnel, including firefighters and support staff, are involved in the wildfire effort there, and even 108 firefighters have arrived to help from Mexico, bringing valuable experience. It's over a month since British Columbia declared a state of emergency over these fires, and they still rage on, having burned nearly 6,000 square kilometers. And there is a fire in Greenland. There have also been many fires in Europe, the most tragic being the Portugal fires, of which there is more in a video we made in the video description. But perhaps the most dramatic fires are those that are occurring in Siberia, where there is very thick smoke covering a huge area. The sheer scale of these fires, which I guess are burning through the huge conifer forests, is, well, shocking. And because they are in such a lowly populated region, there may not be too many witnesses, and this huge, long-lasting event may not be getting the full news coverage it deserves. The rings in the fire detection signatures indicate how the fires are spreading out in all directions. All of these fires could pose further problems for the Greenland ice sheet, as they may leave a layer of soot that darkens the ice top, and that increases the rate of solar heating, and therefore the melting rate also goes up. And that's it for today. Uh, I'm going to try and get videos up more frequently and experiment with sort of rapid response videos so if you want to follow along please uh, check back or subscribe catch you later